Hi, I'm Ashley Park with ID8 TV, and we're here in downtown LA at East West Players, where they're having their one night only Fresh Faces Golden Voices event. Um, Katie, how long have you been a chef? I've been a chef my whole life. My mother was an incredible chef and restaurateur, and she taught me everything I know about cooking and about life. So you pretty much knew you wanted to do this um, from the very beginning? Sort of. I kind of took a detour and fell in love with cooking again, had mental life crisis, and quit my job in the entertainment industry and became a chef full time. Awesome. Well, you saw the show tonight. What did you think? It was amazing. Oh my God. Incredible talent. So inspiring. And I just wish I had pursued singing, but I became a chef instead. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfectly fine with me because um, the food was delicious. What inspired the menu for tonight? Well, I just felt like it was going to be such an eclectic show, so I really wanted to create a harmony of flavors, different Pan-Asian flavors. My last cookbook was actually an everyday Thai cookbook, so I wanted to infuse some of those Southeast Asian flavors into a traditional Chinese menu. How do you think um, East West Players has impacted the community? Oh, I think it has had a major emphasis I think Maryland's program, the arts education, for example, and I'm pleased that Maryland was able to speak about that tonight because even people who come to East West Players may not be aware of the extent that East West Players goes into the community. Can you tell me about one of your favorite memories from East West Players? I think my favorite memory was uh, doing cabaret. I played the older Jewish man and I had a couple of wonderful songs to sing, so I enjoyed that the most, I think. How has East West Players impacted your life? Well, I mean, you know, Tim Dang is incredible. And uh, to be a part of the vision of East West Players, um, you know, the Asian American actors, incorporating African American actors in chess was uh, was a, was a new milestone for East West players and so to be a part of that to be in a, a multicultural cast of chess one of the first in the, in the, in the world to ever uh, do it was uh, was paramount how did the performances go tonight oh my god I was so impressed everyone was amazingly talented and I just was so enthralled with um, everybody like um, Casey Maeda I was I never Dan's daughter before and I saw her for the first time up on stage and I was so enthralled so everything I was just over the top everything was so Daniel I understand that your daughter performed tonight how was that uh, it was sort of nerve-wracking but very exciting as well for Casey to make her East West Players debut and you have to be nice right she's your daughter <laughs> <laughs> absolutely I'm sure she performed beautifully um, was it just kind of um an overwhelming experience at all to see your daughter perform? Well, she's been performing since she was seven in various venues, so I'm used to that. Uh, but since it's the first time that she's actually on the stage of the theater that I've been involved in for 20 years. What was your favorite part of the entire event tonight? I think just working with everyone, the whole event in general, was just an amazing way to showcase you know, the newest artist of, of this generation. And I think, you know, I'm, I'm so proud to say that, you know, we are part of that. And, and we're definitely all growing here at East West Players. Yeah. Definitely the balance when we all came together as a group, um, as the artists of tomorrow for East West Players, and seeing just how much the audience appreciated our work and how much they enjoyed it was just, it's so worth it. It was all, worth all the hard work that we did. What kind of classes have you taken here? Uh, so taking the acting fundamentals uh, one and level two classes here with Dom, he's a great teacher. Um, I actually moved here last summer and this is the first place I came to take classes because you kind of hear about East West players being this like mecca for Asian American theater. So I had to look it up. I came here and met Marilyn and you know just like, this place just became this this home for me. You know, so you have this great support system. As you can see, everyone here tonight is coming out to support the arts and arts education, furthering, you know, Asian Americans in theater. So I had to be a part of it. And Do you have a favorite memory here from the past couple of years that you've been here? Um, I don't know if I have one specific favorite memory, but just in general, I've been so, um, I don't know, I just feel so overwhelmed by how welcoming a community it is. Um, when I first started, 
um, getting involved with East West players. I didn't know what to expect. I thought maybe it was going to be this kind of exclusive club type of feel, but I felt like it's a real community, um, really supportive. Um, I feel a lot of support from Maryland in the education department, and I really love that. And just everybody that I've met here, other volunteers and other students, have just been super supportive. And it's really great to have this community here. So that's the, one of the things that I like best about, about coming to East West Players. Do you have a favorite memory um, from being at East West Players so far? Wow. There are many. I think my one of my most favorite experiences was actually doing something I was deathly afraid of doing, but something ultimately I was so happy and ecstatic that I did, and that was being in uh, Sweeney Todd, and I played Mrs. Lovett, and I was scared to death because Sondheim is a whole different animal, right? And I hadn't sung, done musical theater in a while, but I took the challenge and I did it, and at the end I was so uh, just exhilarated, and I wish we could have done ten more weeks of it or done a year of it. I love doing it. That's my fondness, yeah. Well, one of the great things about acting and directing and just being a part of arts is just being able to put yourself out there and just try new things. Right, absolutely, yeah. Even doing arts, that's why I always say when a door opens, step through it. Even if you're afraid or fearful, you just never know what's going to happen. So when I accepted taking the job as arts education director, I didn't know. I was still sort of hanging on to acting and stuff, but you know what, I'm so glad I walked through that door because I've gotten so many amazing experiences I never would have gotten as an actor doing this what I'm doing. And I'm passionate about education and arts education. And I can feel your passion. Oh, good. I'm glad. Yeah, so don't be afraid to step through that door, right? That's a good thing for all of us to remember. <laughs> Thank you so much, Marilyn. You're welcome. Thank you. What's your vision for the next 50 years? Because I know they're getting ready to celebrate their 50th golden anniversary very soon. So well, We're really excited about our 50th anniversary. And quite frankly, my goal is to have every seat filled in the house for every single performance that we do, for continued support for our arts and education programs, and just to see East-West East West players grow as much as it possibly can. What's your vision for the next 50 years? My vision for the next 50 years is continuing to deliver the most compelling content out there um, to showcase some of the most amazing emerging Asian, uh, Asian talent as well as just talent in general. And in the next 50 years, we hope that, um, you know, that, that the world will be colorblind and that uh, it doesn't matter. Great talent is great talent and you know, everybody will have a platform to be whatever they want to be and get, get, get their voice heard.